this week on Discord, we had some person who was vegan, who hated everyone who wasn't vegan, or I don't, I, I didn't really read that much into it. It was an interesting discussion with them. They called everyone Hitler. They called vegetarians Hitler because Hitler was a vegetarian. And yeah, it, it was, it was, it was quite interesting. But one of the things that they said made me, made me think, made me reconsider what I, what I believe. Uh, no, I'm not Germanic pyranarchist. And the thing that made me think is because I explained why that even though I do believe that a vegan world would be a better world for ecological reasons, I don't believe in necessarily attributing moral worth to animals. I don't think I, I, I just don't find a way to put them into my moral framework framework, at least lo uh, logically. It just doesn't work for me. I don't believe that suffering in itself is bad. Basically, I think you're wrong about that, says Hanim. Yeah, and I, I know most people don't agree with me on that. I Because I, I think most people actually believe that um, suffering is always bad, which I don't agree with. And there's not really a arguments into saying suffering is always bad. I think suffering can be bad. It's not always bad, but it can be bad. And one of the reasons why it's considered bad, at least in my moral framework, is because suffering well, can, can harm social cohesion. And I think morality is all about social cohesion, about maintaining um, like uh, the social fabric of humanity, basically. Making us live together in cooperative fashion. That's what morality is. And why we don't like suffering is because it's, it's because suffering very much harms us and we don't want to suffer as individuals. And why we don't want other people to suffer is because we don't want to legitimize or justify suffering in people because we don't want to legitimize or justify suffering for ourselves. And also when you legitimize or, or make suffering fine for other people, then it does impact you in certain ways, right? If people are unhappy around you, well, you're making your material conditions that make you who you are, you're making them less, less able to develop you to your full potential. That's how I see it. I think suffering is only bad when it harms social cohesion. And by social cohesion, it's not necessarily, it's more about it, it limits the potential for humanity and limits the potential for, for us as individuals. I think it's all about individual happiness. Girl Bear says, when is suffering not bad? I think suffering isn't bad. Uh, well, you can have when suffering is not bad when it can be uh, when it's superseded by like something that's something that makes you kind of happy. For example, when you want to suffer for sexual pleasure, but then the pleasure outweighs the suffering in that case. But in a way where suffering where suffering is bigger than 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 pleasure, for example, if tomorrow aliens in a in a planet that's 3000 light years away or whatever um and they suffer uselessly i don't think it's that important for us no it's not it's not that i want everyone to suffer to me morality is is basically a set of social codes it's just for us to work together that's it you know ants can can work together by being selfless and by just obeying orders, but humans can't work together without developing a strong moral code that forced them in a way to, to live together happily and cooperatively. That's how I see it. How do we stop humans from building hierarchies? I don't know, but Lex, good question, because this is where we, um, we come into the, the, the thought provoking question that the person at, well, it was more an accusation than a question. They were like that my justification where I do not consider animals as as moral agents. They called it, I don't remember exactly, but I remember them calling it ableist. They called it a couple of things. I wouldn't be surprised if they called it racist, but they called it ableist. And I was thinking, like, that's a, a very strong accusation. Am I being ableist for not including animals into my moral framework? I think they might have called me eugen eugenicist as well. And I understand where they're coming from, because I also believe that this kind of rhetoric that I'm talking about with animals, some people have used it against disabled people in a very harmful way. Yeah, but they didn't call me a speciest, uh, Huntem. Or maybe they did, and I, I dismissed it. 
I was thinking, am I am I extremely problematic? Am I like a eugenicist or am I like a like an ableist? Interesting. So I thought about it. And part of me really wanted to take that like charitably. Eugenicist might be a better fit for such an accusation. But eugenicist is about isn't it about like the gene pool and about making the race better by by not mixing it with I don't think vegans are are advocating to mix the human DNA with animal DNA or non-human animal DNA. I don't think the ableist accusation sticks with the logic you use. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, well, I, it still had me thinking. I was like, this makes no sense. But at the same time, it's, it's the rhetoric is, is very, is very um, similar. But then I was like, okay, this, I, I do believe that sometimes that kind of characterization or that kind of labeling can be a bit um, manipulative in the sense of trying to make you feel bad for something that it's like calling people Nazis for not wanting to wipe Israelis in, in, you know, in mass killing. It's, it's the same kind of labeling that, that, that is manipulative and trying to make you, um, doubt your point, but not in a constructive way, more in a appeal to emotion kind of way, which I don't think is, is, is quite right. I think that no matter what you believe about the moral worth of animals, if my position is ableist by excluding them, the only way your position wouldn't be ableist is if you completely included them and put, in, put, a, put them at a moral equality to humans, which I don't believe that it would be very... Um, I don't think that most people b believe in that. I don't think even like vegans and vegetarians believe in that, right? Nobody could really believe that humans and non-human animals have the same moral worth. You can't weigh those two those two lives and say, all right, well, they're equal. I think we have to agree that human lives are more important. And the moment you do that, even if you're a vegan and you do agree that human lives are more important than like a, a human life is more important than a cow life. And I hope you agree with that. But if you do believe that it's ableist, right? You do believe that one is more important than the other. So, yeah, I, I don't include them in my moral framework. And if that makes me ab ableist, then including them in your moral framework, but not putting them at the same moral level as as humans is also ableist. So you'd have to bite the bullet and say, yeah, cow life and human life is worth the same morally. And I don't think you can do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying that either one fits. It's just that I think ableist really doesn't fit. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it fits either. But still had me thinking, because it, it is a very comparable justification for both, right? I don't think the only two options are absolute moral equality and uh, uh, and absolute prioritization prioritization of human preferences. No, uh, no, no, don't get me wrong, Alt Serge. Please don't get me wrong. You're 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 a sub. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> no, um, what I'm talking about is more in terms of uh, of calling me an, an like ableist. I know I know it's not like you either think that cows don't don't mean anything. Or you think that they're equal? I think I think you can mean you, I think you can still argue that cows have more worth, but just not as much more worth as humans. But the thing is, if you're going to call someone who completely dismisses animals or non-human animals uh, moral worth uh, ableist, you have to also agree that by not putting them perfectly at equal value to you to humans, you're also being an ableist, right? Because like. If you take people with disabilities and someone says, I have no more worth, I don't attribute no, I don't attribute any more worth to people with disabilities. All right. They're yeah. The eugenicists, they're, they're, they're ableists. Absolutely. But if someone said, all right, well, I do agree that, that, um, people with disabilities have more worth, but not as much as people who are able-bodied. I think that would still be ableist. So can an animal be its own subject rather than an object relative to humans? What would be the, the social utility of giving subjecthood to animals? That would be more like the question I'm asking. Because giving subjecthood to every single human has a social utility. But to animals, I don't see it. And I, and, but there could be. I don't think it's bad to place an animal life in the same category as human life in a lot of cases. I don't think it's bad either. I don't think it's necessarily bad. But I don't think it's like a moral imperative. Oh, Alt Zerge says, I mean, I get what you mean, but the point I think is this person was making is that what or who counts as an animal or a person is a much more complex question than most realize. 
sociologically, not scientifically. I think it can be complex in the terms that, you know, it's easy to dehumanize humans and, you know, making them like beasts or animals can be a, can blur the lines between animal and, 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 and person. I don't think it's as, as complex as, as we think. <laughs> if we had some kind of um, animal that was, and, and we could argue for social utility and in, in, in giving them personhood, and that argument could be like debated and all that, I think that it would be complex, but I don't think we've, we've encountered an animal, a non-human animal at least, that could do that. Mariana says, do you think animal abuse is morally bad? Just asking, I'm curious. I think, for example, the, the most like crazy example that you can think of, right? Someone is abusing dogs or abusing whatever animal for fun in their basement, right? I don't think it's morally bad to do so. I do think it raises concern. Let's say you just think you're here, you're in your basement. This guy is in his basement and he's thinking, he's fantasizing about killing germinal. Let's say they're in their basement and they're, they're, they're thinking, they're fantasizing about killing germinal, but they're, they, they'll never do it because their whole thing is not wanting to kill germinal. Krana says he's just like me for real, for real. Okay. But someone is, is, is fantasizing about killing germinal. Okay. They're not going to do it. It's just fantasy. And nobody here is going to say that you no know, thought crime or whatever. I don't think it's morally bad to, 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 to have these thoughts. I don't think there's necessarily bad that comes out of them. I don't think it's morally wrong, but I do think it raises red flags. And I do think that, uh, in this case, we can raise an eyebrow and think, all right, this person is a danger. It could be a danger to himself or to themselves and to others. And I think that if someone is like, gets pleasure out of beating a dog or treating uh, an animal wrongly, I think this should be checked. And I think we should do something about it. But I don't think it, it's necessarily morally wrong. And if you talk about like, for example, um, animals who are, who are pets. I think it can be wrong to abuse an animal who's a pet. Again, not because of more, the, the animal necessarily has more worth. I don't believe in that, but I, I do think that by, by hurting it, you could hurt the person who has an attachment to that animal. All right. Bali really likes rocks. I don't understand why they like rocks so much. Some are shiny. Some are different colors. They love it, right? I don't love it. What if one day I decided to take Bali's rocks and crush them with my very strong and manly hands and I crush them into dust and I throw them out or I give them back to Bali, hurt, harmed. Bali is sad. Bali is crying because I, I crushed their rocks. What I did was immoral. Yes, not because the rocks had moral worth. Manly hands, aren't you non-binary? Wait, are you saying that non-binary people can't have manly hands? What are my hands supposed to be? Are they supposed to be feminine? You know what? Pyra anarchist? They'd have non-binary hands. You know what? If I was born a girl, having manly hands would be androgynous and it would be non-binary. Motherfuckers always think that non-binary means androgynous. No! But yeah, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't attribute moral worth to the rocks. It's more about harming the rocks that would harm ballet. Does that mean that the rocks have moral worth? Maybe, actually. But it wouldn't be the rocks that have inherent moral worth. It's moral worth that was attributed to ballet's um, importance attributed to them. Hunham says, does there need to be utility? I think utility justifies the way we, 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 cohab uh, we cohabitate. Coha we we live together and i think if we're gonna adopt something i think i think everything that we have in our world has utility if we're gonna have especially like a moral impediment i think it needs to be justified and i think utility is the justification for it and i think every code and every every law every everything that inhibits or prohibits other people's actions need to be uh, justified and i think we use utility find me one code that you know, is not justified by some kind of utilitarian uh, justification. 
and I, I would argue that if there is no utilitarian justification for for a code or something, I think we'd probably need to to stop it. Phenomenologist says, I mean, is there any fundamental difference between humans and animals? I I do believe that there's a difference between humans and animals. I mean, humans are animals, but if you mean between humans and non-human animals, I do believe so. The fun fundamental difference, at least in our perception, in our way of of of, of working together. Yeah, Alzer says, I also think people forget that uh, there was once several species of human of human humans. Do they count as animals or do they get personhood? Why do uh, why do draw the line between our primate co cousins? In that case, for example, I think there would be like a lot of nuances and a debate that would be war would be warranted, right? Are these people humans? And I think we've had that debate for a very long time. Are these people humans? Are these people humans? Are these people humans? I know, like in the ideal, we don't need to justify the humanity of anyone, but I think we kind of do. I think it's important. For example, why do we do we justify the the humanity of black people? You might say we don't need to, but I think logically we have to. When you when you justify it, you you there is no arguments in dehumanizing, for example, black people or disabled people. And I think those those arguments are, uh, at least in my worldview, what humanizes or dehumanizes someone or person or beings. I guess is their contribution to to our social fabric, which which come back to helping us as individuals, right? Do I think that humanizing a, a specific, like for example, black people is good for me and for society? Yes. Yes, of course. The potential for, for, for anyone, any humans to, to benefit humanity and therefore benefit myself as an individual is so strong. And the, the, that potential needs can't be ignored. If it's ignored, we're, we're, we're losing out. We're missing out. And therefore, that's why I think justifying what exactly s distinguishes us from animals. I think it's in terms of, as I said, when you, let's say I have, you know, someone says, all right, disabled people should not be considered humans. And we have that debate. I think my, my argument, what to me is a human and what makes, uh, why I want to defend other humans. It's a deeply selfish reason. It's because when people, when humans around me are emancipated when humans around me can 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 develop to their truest or their most potential it benefits me right disabled people are included in that black people are included in that segments of the population that people keep wanting to dehumanize it's easy to say these segments of the population benefit me or benefit society and therefore benefit me or have the potential to benefit society and i think everyone has the potential to benefit society even criminals. That's why I'm for reformation. Is that reformation? Was it in French English when you want criminals get re rehabilitation? Because I have strong faith in human potential. And when I say potential, it's the potential to, to enrich my life through their contributions to humanity. No, maybe an anarchist says, Sean thinks you aren't a person if you don't fit in the social fabric. No, I think if you don't fit in the social fabric, you can still benefit I think actually it's good for, I think outsiders benefit society a lot for many different reasons. Alzer says it's, it's an exercise to have to, to, to justify like belonging to humanity and to personhood. Yeah, but I, I understand it hurts a lot, but it's something that you have to do because people put into question, but it doesn't mean that there's no justification for it. And, and there is one, of course. The issue here is that some people are, are questioning it. Not that there is a justification, because again, there needs to be one. What uh, what was your justification for hum uh, for your humanity and my my humanity? The justification for, for my humanity is to say that I have the potential to to benefit humanity and therefore benefit. Example, for example, if I have to justify my humanity to you, maybe an anarchist, my humanity and respecting my humanity and protecting it helps your potential. But because by 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 protecting and like encouraging my potential you are uh, guaranteeing or maybe not guaranteeing but you're contributing to your potential being fulfilled as well because i can you know depends what i do and even if i don't do anything right i can still have the potential to do something that will greatly help you because i think humans are are a cooperative species and if i do something that hurts you i still think i have the potential to make i still think that 
the potential that humans have to make their their environment better and by environment i don't mean like nature or whatever i mean like the material conditions to your existence better i think uh outweighs the the, the negative <laughs> that, that's a funny comment that's a that's a really funny comment thank you everything seems kind of like it's all part of one interconnected substance to me why draw lines in the sand that don't exist well it's more understanding what to me at least it's more understanding what morality is and why we do it and why we do morality and trying to understand it better because now morality is not something that comes from above right from god or from 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 church as it's been for millennia or from from religion in general it's something that we have to figure out together what morality is and what its function is and why we have morality and what morality is and blah 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 all these things are are important to know and I, I think just saying everything has moral worth from the rock to i don't think that's really helping out also says honestly i do think animals material conditions are close enough to to so many examples of how people of color and disabled people were slash are treated that disqualifying them for from moral consideration can be effectively racist or ableist if it's theoretically too different a philosophical question i didn't i don't think that excluding animals from from your moral framework means that you're racist or ableist that I, I could be like i could be racist or ableist and also be against not be against but not consider animals moral worth but i think you can con not consider an animal as having more worth and still believe that disabled people and people of color have more consideration but it can be racist and ableist if you if you do both but i don't think they're necessarily linked yeah no i don't like that I talked about, I don't know if you were there, Alzerge, at the beginning of the conversation. It all started with someone calling me ableist for not considering uh, animals' moral worth. And I don't agree with that. And as I said, I don't know if you were there, Alzerge, but like, if you do believe that it's racist slash ableist to believe that, you know, to not give animal moral worth, if you believe that they have less moral worth than you, isn't that also racist or ableist? And you have to believe that animals have less moral worth than you. You have to believe that. You have to believe that animals don't have the same moral worth as, as other humans. And if you believe that, I do think it's racist or ableist. Because if someone said a uh, person of color or disabled people, yeah, they have moral worth, but less than a human, I think that would be racist or ableist speech. And I hope you agree with that. Between our, like, if you do believe, if you say like, yeah, I believe that animals have moral consideration are worth more consideration but just not as much as humans that's ableist that's racist because if people said the same thing about people of color or like or people who are disabled god damn would i would i jump on the on on the opportunity to call them racist or ableist of course i would i, I do think it kind of is to be honest like if your argument against giving personhoods to one person are used against the other does the intention matter but like if someone argued for personhood of plants and like you're, you think it's ridiculous that someone would argue for the personhood of plants, right? But like, for example, you say suffering is the reason why it's bad to kill animals or whatever. What if I said life is the reason, like killing is bad no matter what. It's not suffering that determines if, if, if killing or not is good or bad. It's taking away organic life that is bad. And then I include plants in that justification, which I could. Wouldn't you be excluding uh, one group, one group's personhood against the other. Yeah, morality to me just seems to, like a tool to ensure the relative safety and well-being of members of a population. That's how I see it as well. That's yeah, that's exactly how I see it. Because we don't have, because we don't have like the um, hive mind of like bees and ants, we have developed morality to cooperate. Because we don't have a hive, hive mind, and we can't live without cooperating. Jellyfish, for example, don't have a central nervous system. So does that mean they can't feel pain? So would poking a jellyfish over and over and over again be considered morally wrong? What if taking a jellyfish and putting it on the beach where it can die? But if it doesn't feel pain, does it matter? But animal advocates will say it does matter. That's why I don't think pain is necessarily a good... I think it's arbitrary. I'm looking for something that's more logic-based. I don't even know if, if it's true. Jelly, can jellyfish, jellyfish, they can't feel pain because they're brainless. 
they have no pain receptors. Would you, if I took a, a jellyfish right now and then I, I took it out of water and then I started cutting it all over, you would feel like that's wrong, morally wrong, even though it doesn't feel any pain, right? I think they can, they, uh, I think they can't feel pain. I'm not sure. Reddit says no. So of course it's on r slash PETA. So I believe Reddit. <laughs> I mean, about animals versus plants, the distinction between those is more fuzzy than people think. Some living beings are technically both. And like, to be honest, I'm not sure that what determinator I want to, I want to use, but I definitely don't think sapiens uh, should be it because it's very hard to prove with certainty. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not using sapiens either, as I've said. Okay, Alzheimer's Road. Uh, Signore uh, uh, Germinal, thanks for the consideration of my argument. I'm certain that I think uh, that I think living beings with the capacity of potential capacity to suffer should be given some degree of moral consideration, similar to personhood. But I'm not sure if right now it would be uh, I would be fully explain, fully able, I imagine, to explain the why. It's all right. I mean, it's it's not a closed discussion. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, and we'll talk about it again. It's. I mean, that's what's great about having these these streams often. I mean, it's not the first time that we, we're talking about animals, animal rights and moral consideration and all that, and it won't be the last time. And um, perhaps in the future, I will say that I was wrong. I don't fucking know. I could be wrong. And if, and if I'm proven wrong, and if I can, if I say that I'm wrong and I accept it, that means I, I would have grown. It's good.